There we go. Oh, yes, sir. There we go. I was wondering. Okay. So, what this is, you guys have seen 300, yeah? And in the movie 300, the Persian emissary, the enemy, and his ambassadors, they all come and they threaten Sparta with submission and, and, and imprisonment. Earth and water, all this other stuff. What's he holding right there? Skulls. skulls. And what do the skulls have on them? Crowns. Crowns. If you look at the, these are skulls of conquered kings. If you, in the movie, if you look closely, every one of these has crowns. And so basically, these are his trophies. And I, when I show this scene, I want you to understand, I'm not going to show it tonight, but, but when I show this scene, when you go back and look at the scene, I want you to see this guy and Xerxes and their army as little porn demons, as fornication demons, as, as demons of lust. And, and they're coming into your room, they're coming into your home, and they're threatening you with bondage. Submit, yield compromise, give in. And remember this, when, when, when they're threatening him and they're walking with a Persian, and she says, do not be coy or stupid Persian. Leonidas' wife, remember this? Remember that? She threatens him, and he says, who is this woman who thinks she could talk to a man like this? Remember that? Dude. So, Leonidas takes him to that big old hole, and he's, he's talking to him, and he says, earth and water, earth and water. And remember what happens? Because he's, he's looking around and he's evaluating everything. What am I really compromising? The people, the kids, our future, our morals, our standards, our freedom. And then he looks at his wife and his wife says, mm -hmm, yep. And he pulls out his blade and says, you done messed up, a a Ron. And, and And basically, he kicks him in the chest and says, this is Sparta. This is Sparta. You threaten my queen. You threaten my home. You threaten my people with slavery and death. I'm talking about you guys with your rooms and your phones and the porn. That's what you should do. You should, you should look at this porn stuff and say, how dare you? How dare you come into my room? How dare you interfere with my future? And then you kick that demon in his chest in the name of Jesus. Boom! What's your room number? 235. This is 235! Boom! And you think I'm kidding? What's your barracks number? Your, your, whole, your whole barracks number is 112? 3223? Three, two, two, three. Three, two, two, three. Stop! What room? Uh, stop! I just need a barracks number! Three, two, two, four. Okay, I, was, I was thinking like room three, two, two, four. You, you, And we're still stuck here. All I needed is a building number. I was trying to escalate it to not just a room, but the whole barracks. You, can, you, you take charge. You're the pastor of 3224. You're the, you're the, of all the 3224. And they say, well, you ain't my pastor. I don't care. I'm assigned 3224. And 3224, boom, get out of here. This is holy ground. And take authority over the entire barracks. And then take over Schwab. This is my camp. That's why I used to walk around here. This is my island. Okinawa, I own Okinawa. I claim all of Okinawa for the kingdom of God. That's what you do. Don't stop there. I claim all of Japan. I claim America. It's what you do. Yeah? All right, so that's what that is. Trophies of the enemy. Here we go. Understand, we already went over Romans 6.13. Oh, we got to go there. We got to read this again. Everybody go to Romans 6.13 because I'm going to show you something else. Help your neighbor get there. Look left and right. Look in front of you. Look behind you because I, I need to read this to you. Now watch, I'm going to say something here. You guys with me? Look left and right. Make sure you're there. Make sure nobody's cheating. Here we go. Verse 13, Romans 6, 13. He's talking to believers. He says, you do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. You hear that? He's saying, don't let your body become an instrument used by the devil to serve sin. He said, instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. 14, sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. 
15. Well, then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Hang on, I'm going to show you something. Verse 13. Verse 14. I'm sorry, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13. It says, you neither yield you your members, your bodies, as instruments of unrighteousness, but you yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. What is he talking about here? In verse 13, he says, don't yield your bodies as instruments of unrighteousness. What does that mean? Huh? What is he talking about? He said, do not let your body become an instrument in the devil's hands. What does that mean? You guys are missing it. If, 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 I, if I handed someone a... a, a a, a hatchet. I hand him a hatchet and tell him, now use that for evil. What's he going to do with a hatchet? He's going to use it for evil. Right? And so, how can Satan take a hold of your body and use, and you cooperate and be used for evil? Shoot him right over your heads. You have no clue. What? <laughs> Go. Uh, Did you hear? Yeah. I've had more people. I can list probably almost a dozen people who contracted AIDS, and because they contracted AIDS and they felt bad about it and they were victims, they wanted to share their AIDS with other people. What? Yes. Why would they do that? Give me more. Because, okay, I, I have AIDS. I, I'm telling you, I, there's, there's a lot of people, and they say this, I have AIDS now. None of you know that I have AIDS. But you don't, I don't want to give it away. My job now on the DL is to give all of you AIDS as much as I can. Why? Come on, come on. Misery loves company. And I want you, you don't understand my pain. I didn't ask for AIDS. I didn't ask for it. It, I'm a victim. Yes, you did. You contracted it. We talked about that. And so they sit there and say, you know what? The only way I'm going to get some empathy here is if you get it and you get it and you get it and you get it. Because if you get it, then you'll probably understand my pain. These are sick people. Instruments of unrighteousness. Encourage someone to go get an abortion. Instrument of unrighteousness. Yeah. And so we give, it's okay, you know, booty calls, multiple booty calls, whatever, and you give them bad advice. Yeah, you're being used as an instrument of un unrighteousness. That's what he's talking about. So. But he knows exactly how Satan you know, like he's so That's exactly right. She's right. That's nothing new under the sun. That's what Satan is doing. He's trying to cause pain. So here, we've asked you this: Can a Christian be possessed? Body, soul, and spirit. Right there. There's your body. There's your soul. There's your spirit. Go back and read that. What would here? Here you go. We a lot of times, like like when we were in the brig, and uh, we had a lot of underage things happen. We had dads do things to their daughters, and they're in the brig. We had underage men did things with underage people, men and boys and girls, right? And so, why would they do that? Because now these 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 guys they're guilty, and they're asked the question. Why'd you do it? What did they say? You be careful because you're, you're speaking at a court martial. And what are you going to tell the, 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 the jury and the judge? What are you going to tell them? Why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? Why'd you have sex with underage boys? Why'd you have child porn? Why'd you molest your own daughter? Somebody give me an explanation. Go ahead and tell them. See, that would be bad too. Why? Yeah. So why, if it was wrong done to you, why would you do wrong to somebody else? Even though that's true what you said because that is a dynamic. See, you know, you know why they do it? Because uh, I can, there's so many. 
These people. <laughs> Go ahead. No, you. <laughs> Go ahead. No. Sort of, but they'll never admit that in front of a jury. You can't do that. The, 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 why would a dad do that to his daughter? And people ask this question all the time. What would possess him to do that? What would possess him to do that? That's what we're talking about now. But see, you you can't really say a demon made me do it because the court marshals won't put up with that, even though it's true. You know what it is? It's your flesh. It's kind of like we had had, had so many people. Watch, we had one. We had one guy, some Lance Corporal. uh, he, He was on a 96. And he went to this popular parking lot and he found a Japanese wallet with about $5,000 worth of yen in it. And what did he do with the wallet? I hit the lottery and he kept the wallet. And so what happens, he drove away. The Japanese man who lost his wallet went running back in panic, got to his parking space looking around. And witnesses said, well, there was a, a white Yankee vehicle that drove that way. And so it took him a couple of days. And they found him, and he still had the wallet, and he had some of the yen left. A lot of the yen was left. So here's my question. When he woke up that morning, because he's on a 96, when he woke up that morning, did he say, you know what? I think today I'm going to do something so stupid to ruin my whole career. Did he do that? So how did it happen? Flesh? One, one wrong decision? Maybe it was crossroads and he made a wrong decision because he ruined his career. He was in the brig. He lost his career. Just over, over $5,000. And we do it all the time. And so again, flesh, influ- it's, it's like Satan will throw this bait out at you and he'll throw this bait at you. And it's like, you know, this is what he does. He'll throw something at you like, uh, like, like, like uh, little boys. It didn't. Oh, it's stuck. He likes little boys. I'll throw more little boys at him. Or he'll throw, you know, weed. No. Nope. Uh, <laughs> counterfeit money. Oh, it's stuck. Got more. And so she'll, she'll start doing counterfeit money. It doesn't matter what the trap is. It could be drugs. It could be sleep. It could be anger, disobedience, your words. It could be all kind of stuff. Right? It could be rebellion. Go ahead. No. Nope. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What's the right thing to do? Turn it in. It's not yours. Matter of fact, if you lost $5,000, would you want someone to turn it in? Or would you be like, somebody got lucky. Woohoo, yeah. Somebody hit the lottery with your $5,000. I know. No. No, you do the right thing. You know what the right thing is. So here we go. Um. Ah, uh, what will possess someone to do whatever, fill in the blank, giving demons permission to operate in your life. I've told you this is a definition of sin. Uh, one of the definitions of sin is giving demons permission to operate in your life. Um, somebody read that. Go to Deuteronomy. Oh, yeah, no, we got to read this. This is good. And now I know what it is. Julian, you got it? Go ahead, read it nice and loud. Read it. Okay. Sorry. What's happening here? It's saying if anyone in the Lord's army, this is the Israelites, if any of our soldiers were unclean 
by the reason that chances him by night, nocturnal emissions, that's what that's talking about, wet dreams, he's unclean. And he cannot fight with us. Why? Okay. One, come up here. Two, come up here. Okay. Okay, right here. Come here. Come here. Okay, stand shoulder to shoulder. You stand right in the middle of that bowl. You stand right here. Shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder. I asked you. Now, don't poke each other with these. These are sharp. They're plastic, but they're still sharp. No, I'm serious. Okay. Okay. Stand shoulder to shoulder. Okay, now I want you to notice something here. Shoulder to shoulder. They're on guard. What is your profession? Oh, God. They're supposed to say, <laughs> whatever. They sound like seals. <laughs> so, okay, the question I asked you, because we just got through reading, if there are any of you that, 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 that are unclean by this reason, this nocturnal emission, you, you're unclean, you cannot fight with us. You have to go cleanse yourself. Why? Why? What's the big deal? And? You're a liability. We're getting it. We're getting closer. And so what happens, it was known that soldiers with guilt on their mind, do not fight very well. Why? Because they're scared of death. They're scared of death, more appropriately. Yeah, they're certainly distracted, but they're scared of death. What? What does that mean? They're not going to fight so valiantly. Why? Go ahead. Come on, come on, come on. You hear this? They don't want it. And so basically what happens, let's say these three are all ready to go and they're 100 percent, 100 focused on the fight. And you're called to fight, lay your entire 100 percent, lay your life down if necessary. You don't want to die, but you're willing to die. Yes. OK, shoulder, shoulder, on guard. This one right here is going to be a problem. OK, so they're on guard. And, and what happens if <coughs> if. <coughs> And you guys never, you guys never find out. <laughs> and so, what happens in, in in the in the Jewish army, the Hebrew army? If this guy had sin in his life, he could not fight with these two unless he went and cleansed himself. He had to ceremonially cleanse himself, spiritually cleanse himself, physically cleanse himself, because he had he was guilty. All right. So, what happens? This is what it looks like. You smile at me, you're at war. Okay. Let me see here. This is sin. This is some of his secret sins. You know about it, but they don't know about it. Okay. Girlfriend number one. You gotta submerge that. You gotta hide that. Underwater, yep. Old song that reminds you of your old girlfriend. Inappropriate fantasies. Affair that you had that you didn't tell your wife about. You got perfume from girl A and you love that cologne, but you're married to girl B. Girlfriend number two. Only fan subscription. Snapchat stuff, voyeurism. Another cologne thing. Oh, them old girlfriend phone numbers. You guys are you guys are on guard. This is inappropriate fantasies about your your pastor's wife. Favorite porn site. 
voyeurism, peeking under them skirts. Girlfriend number three. That, that TAD secret. Facebook, your Facebook girlfriend. Facebook girlfriend. Business trip secrets when you were in TAD. You have pics of your old girlfriend still. Get them underwater. That cologne that you got for Christmas that you didn't tell your wife about. Time spent watching porn. You were molested as a child but didn't tell anybody. Tinder. More porn sites. Pornhub. Coveting, coveting another man's wife. That affair that you had. Your first girlfriend in high school. Those sexting messages. Oh no. Them old songs that remind you of your old girlfriends. More sexting. Oh, there's more sexting. Okay, put it, get all that down. Come on, you're almost there. You got this. Do you see what's happening? Okay, let's freeze. What's he doing? He's trying to cover them up. Hiding, covering. What's he supposed to be doing? He's supposed to be fighting. Is this any sort of distraction? Yes. Now, why is he covering up? Shame and guilt. What's he more interested in? This is called pride right here. What's he more interested in? His, his own image, not theirs, not the mission. It's about him right now. And he cannot let any of this because he tried to let one. Because if he takes his energy and focus off just one of these sins that we're suppressing, what happens? It pops up and you can't have that because that's... My image. And so you got to put him back down. And so what ends up happening, he's stuck here and he's a liability to these two. Does this make sense? See, he's called to fight. He's called to lay down his life. But is he laying down his life? Now, why is he doing this right? He, 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 instead of fighting like these guys, these guys are ready to lay down their lives. They're, 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 they're fine with dying right now. Why are they fine with dying right now? Huh? Their consciences are clear. If they died right now, they're sinless, they're forgiven, they go straight to the Lord. If he died right now, because he, he's not going to fight as well, matter of fact, he'll probably back up a little bit. It's tough because he doesn't want to fight because he's not ready to meet God. Because his soul is not... Got it? Is this making sense? And so one of the things that has to happen, his stuff has to be exposed I'll get to the exposure thing in a minute when we get to restoration and stuff like this. Let's just let's leave that alone right there. Thanks, guys. We'll leave that alone right there. Thanks, guys. Just put your, put your stuff down. Okay. <clears throat> you guys. So, one of the, one of the things where, where I learned this at was not only just scripture, but when I went to the Gulf um, and we were lined up in sticks and we are ready to go the ground war is about to begin and we're all lined up in all these sticks and the minefields right in front of us. We have these tank plows that are going through in front of us, supposed to be removing mines and stuff like that. And, um, I'm in my stick and we're in a line and I'm scared. I promise you I'm scared. I'm, I'm a driver of a Humvee and stuff is blowing up everywhere. There's, there's overhead fire. There's uh, indirect fire. There's, there's direct fire. There's all kinds of stuff going on. And um, the, the threat of chemical attack was high. So we, we got our mop gear standing by just in case. And my lieutenant, who was my, my A driver, well, he's with my Humvee with me. He takes off because he's, they got to go to this head shed in, in, with, with the CP. And so he goes to the CP. And so I'm there sitting there. I'm afraid because it's about to happen. And I'm afraid. I promise you, I get down in front of my Humvee. And I just begin to pray. I promise you, I pray like I've never prayed before. 
and I began to pray, and I began to do an inventory of all my sins that I can remember, all my sins I've ever committed. And I was just, God, that one. Forgive me for that one. And it, it took me about 30 minutes, and I was saying, God, forgive me for this, forgive me for this, God, and that one too. And God, and when I was done, I couldn't think of anything else. I was like, I felt peace. I felt peace, and I was legit ready to die. I didn't care what happened after that. I really didn't. And so, matter of fact, I was such at peace that I actually laid on my Humvee for another 30 minutes until the LT came back. And I went to sleep, and bombs are going off everywhere, and I'm just sleeping on the top of my Humvee because I didn't care. I'm, 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 I'm ready to go. And so the principle here is that man's soul is restless until it rests with God. That's, Augustine said this. And so one of the things that happened, his soul was not at rest. His soul was restless. And until you make your peace with God, you're not, you're not going to fight very well. I'm talking about on the daily stuff that we have sin in our lives. Right? And so this stuff has to be exposed. I'll get to some of that in a minute. And so I'm not going to go through all this, but go back and read Hosea 4, 16 through 9, 6 through 19. And it's talking about in the message. Try to read it in the message because it says, verse 6 says, my people. God is speaking. He says, my people. Not anybody. He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. He says, my people, my Christians are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. Not just non-believers, not anybody else. He says, it's my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. And then he goes, he says, the spirit of whoredoms has caused my people to err. The spirit of whoredoms has caused my people to err. My people have fallen into the whore's domain. I'll explain that in a second. And then in verse 14, and he, God is fired up here. He says, he says, people like priests and people like, priests like people, you can't tell the two apart because you're all a bunch of whores. And he says, you have whoring daughters, you have whoring wives, the men and the priests are whores. And then he says, and then he gets mad and God says, I'm not after your whoring daughters or your adulterous wives. And then he says, I'm after the men. I'm coming for the men because it's your fault that we're like this. That's what he says right there in verse, in verse 14. He says, I'm after the men. And then he says, Israel has played the whore. And you're like, you're, you're caught up in this whirlwind. One of the circles of Dante's Inferno, it's like circle two or three. There's this whirlwind of sin. And you get caught up in this whirlwind. You just imagine being in a tornado. Because if you're ever caught up in a tornado, there's, there, you can't, there's nothing you can do about it. You're just going to get ripped around because you just don't have the strength. That's what it's talking about, this whirlwind of sin. We had a concrete pool down there in American Village years ago. And we can, a bunch of adults can get going in one direction and we'd get it going so fast. And we were going in a circle so fast that everyone could pick up their feet, including the kids. And what, what happened after we picked up our feet? The kids were like spinning around, yeah, yeah, going in this big old giant circle, right? And so that's, that's what it's like when we get caught up in sin. It becomes a whirlwind and we become helpless. Because now the whirlwind has us. This is one of the circles of Dante's. Got it? So, domain of the whore. What's a domain? See, because it says, it says the spirit of whoredoms has caused my people to err. What's a whoredom? It's the domain of the whore. Because I, I, one time I, I said, what's a whoredom? And somebody said, a dumb whore. That's not what that means. That's, D-O-M means what? No. Domain. Now, what is, if there's a king, what is it? It's a kingdom, domain of the king. If there's a queen in charge, what is it? It's a queendom, domain of the queen. What's a whore dumb? Domain of the whore. What's a domain? Not quite. Let's be more specific. Close. It's a place where rulership is exercised, where there's, there's governing authorities. And when we enter the whore, the whore's domain, she has rules. She has rights to you now because you've sinned. Follow me? You guys okay? Okay. You enter sexual sin. You become subject to the laws of the whore's You become an instrument used in his arsenal. Galatians 4.3, do not be... Somebody read really, uh, Galatians 4.3. 6, 7, talk about God is not mocked. What's 4, 3? Nice and loud. In the 
same way we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. Yeah, enslavement to the elementary principles of the world. Number two, you enter the spirit realm illegally without proper covering. So when you sin sexually, let's say the... In particular, the first time you had sex. Let's say you were living with mom and dad and you had sex at 16. I said sex marries you. If you sex marries you, what just happened? What about your parental covering? Because until you have sex, your parents are your covering. Your parents are your shepherds. But when you have sex, see, what's supposed to happen, like our oldest daughter got married a couple years ago and uh, she belongs to you now. The two shall become one. Go start your own nest. They left, she left our parental covering, had sex with her husband, and now they're married. He's her head now. There's more to this. Right? But what happens if you don't get legally married or church or ceremonially married and you're still staying at home, but you're having sex? They, never grow up. they don't grow up, but right there. You got the parental covering and you become one flesh with whoever you were laid with. And it begins to compete with parental covering in your life. And you don't even realize you're married. You guys okay with this? You're good, you're good. Okay, here's another thing. You become multi-married and multi-headed when you have multiple, multiple partners. Multi-headed, if you're a woman, multi-married. And one of the things that happens, we had a female, very gifted in the arts, I mean, extremely gifted. She would be able to do productions here on island, organize, consecrate, initiate, and, and, and establish theater productions on the island. She was, she was good. And uh, she was helping us with the step show uh, for Father's Day. And one of the things in Father's Day, as, as she was producing and directing and everything, getting it set up, uh, I had this um, mom say, man is the head of woman. And she said, no, 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 can't do that. I said, why? What are you talking about? She said, no, I don't, I don't buy that. And so I cannot be a part of this. And she bailed on us. And so we had to kind of go on without her. But she said that she's married and that in her house, her husband and her are 50-50. Is that okay? No. Why not? Exactly. Explain. That's exactly right. And that's what I told her. And me and Sandy were talking to her like, no, 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 it's not 50-50. He's the head of the house. This is Bible. He's the head. And she said, not in my house. There's two heads in my house. And I told her, anything with two heads is a freak of nature. It's an abnormality. A two-headed cow, a two-headed dog, a two-headed cat, a two-headed snake, a two-headed turtle. These are freaks of nature. It's abnormal. It ought not be. And she said, I don't care what you say. And so what ends up happening... Couple. <laughs> what ends up happening, a couple years go by, and she's getting ready to leave Island, and she comes to us, and she apologizes. She says, I'm sorry. She said, I misread Sandy. I thought maybe that I was domineering, and that I was, she was my slave, basically, because I'm, I'm, the, I'm the head, and she's submissive. She didn't like that word. And, uh, and then she went into her past. She said, my mom, I saw my mom with multiple relationships with guys, and guys would abuse her. And I told myself when I was a young kid, I would never let a man have authority over me. And she said, that's been my, my, my Achilles uh, heel throughout my life as a woman and as a mother and a wife. I don't trust men. She said, but I've seen your relationship. I'm sorry, you guys have a healthy relationship. It's beautiful, I want that. So she repented. Well, she had sexual partners, several sexual partners, so she had a lot of heads over her. <coughs> and men who have sexual partners, a lot of sexual partners, you're a multi-husband. I told you, that will compete with that. Because this is what happens here. Yeah? Okay, you violate, what happens when you enter the domain of the whore? You violate the commandments not to commit adultery and to flee fornication. You just jumped all into adultery and you, you're walking in fornication. You curse your sin and curse and sin your foundation right here. This is the curses right there, all in your foundation, and you're doing it unintentionally. You're doing it, and then we wonder why I have so much drama. You become an, a weapon or an instrument in Satan's arsenal. We just read that. You set in motion a negative 
law of yielding and bondage. And so you become bound to sinful things. You set in motion the negative law of sowing and reaping. You sow bad things, you're going to get bad things. Making sense? You become physically infirmed and weakened. Sin, sin drains you. I promise you, sin kills you. There's, you know, studies have shown that lying produces cancer, cancerous enzymes in your body. Just lying. Can, lying produces cancerous enzymes in your body. Lying doesn't make you feel good. When you're lying, you know you're lying. It, it, it has a negative effect on your body. And so it's, it's a good thing to be able to tell the truth at all times. You're creating demonic covenants with, in your body and your soul with demons. You become engaged to the spirit of harlotry and you disengage from Christ. I'm not talking about your salvation necessarily. You have to figure that one out. But did, I, I promise you, if we're, we're involved in sexual sin, you cannot take them sexual sins and be a member of Christ. There's a disengagement. Something happens. I don't believe you lose your salvation, but I know it's not good. It's like me committing adultery, and then we never got divorced, but, but is it going to affect us, our marriage? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's huge. All right? Um, that was all the bad stuff. Here's the good stuff. You guys okay? What? That was the bad stuff. We're talking about spiritual stuff now. Let's talk about the good stuff. This is the good stuff how it's supposed to be. Now, <coughs> Song of Solomon, if you read the Song of Solomon, that's a man and a woman making love. All right? Some people say, no, it's an allegory. It's a, it's a uh, figure of uh, Christ and his love towards his, his children. His no, no. I'll explain in a second because they're having sex. And so that's not going to happen with Christ, right? And so there's this thing called exclusivity, and this is absolutely key. What does that mean? This is not exclusivity. This is exclusivity. What's the benefit of exclusivity? Somebody said, somebody said, it. mine, 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 hubba hubba. Not yours. Get your own. Mine. Mine. Mm. That's right. She belongs to me. I belong to her. <laughs> so, so yeah, get, when, 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 like, see, think about it. When you get married, are you going to want to share your spouse? Heck No. Shoot, no, mine. So then why is the girl that you're going to get married to or fa fall in love with sharing herself now? We had a prisoner one time. He said, you know, he was a recon dude. And he said, uh, this dude was a good looking guy. And he was tall. And he, we, we called him Pretty Ricky. His name was Ricky. He went away, and he was in the brig. They caught him. And... He, got, he was in the brig like two or three times. Anyway, they discharged him. But his name was Ricky, and he would come and sit in the chapel like this all the time. He even came to church with us over at Yomitan. He came to Yomitan, and he'd sit in the front row drunk. And then but we would ask him, so when, when you're out hitting the clubs, you're hoeing around, but you're coming to church, you say you're a Christian, um, what, what, when are you going to turn it off? He said, when I finally meet Mrs. Wright, I'm going to turn it all off. I said, well, who's, who's Mrs. Wright? Give me an idea. He said, someone like Jessica Alba. I said, okay, okay, Jessica Alba, okay. And Sandy said, here you are saying that you're going to be faithful to someone like Jessica Alba when you meet her, but you're not being faithful to her right now. And he was like, hmm, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> you're an idiot. So, so this is why this stuff is exclusivity huge man so here we go just so you know when you when you go into this is just what love is what love really is right here if you read chapter four and this is where they haven't they don't even touch each other until right around verse eight and nine and they're making love man and it's romantic he's talking to her and he's 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 using love to her you read go back and read song of solomon when you get a chance and he's saying he's, he's going from the top of her head, her eyes, her nose, her lips, her neck, her breasts, her belly, her thighs. 
He's saying, when he gets down to the thighs, he's saying something. It's called the mountain of myrrh. And he says, I'm at the mountain of myrrh. <laughs> and he said, there's some stuff going on down here. <laughs> there's, a, there's a sealed fountain. It's locked up. And she says, basically, that's my garden. And she says, blow on my garden. What? <laughs> she, says, she says, make my garden breathe. And he's like, I can do that. <laughs> and there's all kind of stuff going on. And then he goes right into verse 5. And, oh, man, there's so much going on. And, and God is right there in verse 5, chapter 5, verse 1. God is saying, drink deeply and enjoy. I approve of what you guys are doing. This is why I come up with the threesome thing. That's where that comes from. Because God is a part of his sexuality. He says, I approve of what you're doing. I made that for you. And he said, tear that thing up, boy. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a loose translation. But that's what he said. He says, drink deeply and enjoy. I made this for you. I approve of what you're doing. And then afterwards, they've had sex. And this man, it's kind of like he's smoking his cigarette. And he's like, I have come into my garden, my fruits. I've tasted my choices, vine. And that's like five times he uses his personal pronoun, mine. And it's like, mine, 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 mine. I have made you mine. Oh. Yeah, so good. And so all of this is what's supposed to happen. If you go, re go back and read that, and I would highly recommend you read it in the NLT or, or a um, paraphrase translation, like message or something like that. Because if you try to read it word for word, it loses a lot of meaning because word for word doesn't capture the spirit of what's trying to be communicated. All right? Okay, so now watch this. It's going to get better. What is this? Anybody know what this is? It's the tabernacle. It's the tabernacle. And the tabernacle of old, when it was set up before the, the Solomon built the temple, they had to set up a tent. And then when they set up the tent, it was mobile. They could travel, and they would set that thing back up. And uh, when they finally got into Jerusalem, they, uh, Solomon actually... And so basically there's three parts to the tabernacle. Just so you know, there's three parts. There's the courts. These are called the outer courts and inner courts. There's a holy place. That's two. And then the holy of holies right there. And there's a veil right there. That veil separates the holy place from the holy of holies. And that's the Ark of the Covenant. You guys remember this? Do I need to explain this? Okay, so basically three parts. The courtyards, they're called the outer courts and inner courts. The holy place and then the holy of holies. The three the priest, annually, the priest before Jesus had to go here, enter the courts, and he had to go to the bronze altar, he had to go to the bronze laver. These were all stations that he had to do something here, perform something here, and he's, the goal is the very presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant. And then he'd go into the holy place, there's a table of showbread, there's an altar of incense, there's a lampstand of, of illumination, and then once he got all that done, he could go behind this veil right here, which separated the holy place from the holy of holies. This was the very presence of God. Got it? And it's been said, and I've asked a lot of Jewish people, <coughs> I get yes and no's on this. I really don't know. But some say, you've heard the story about the priest had bells on his robe, and annually he would, he would prepare himself to, to make atonement for the people, and then he'd go in here by himself, and he'd be walking around and jingle, 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 jingle. You can hear him jingle, 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 right? You heard this? And sometimes they said that there's a rope tied around his foot because if the jingling and the bell stopped, what do you know? He might be dead. So they put, hey, Nick, he dead. And so they pulled Nick out. Adi, you're up. And then, Adi? <laughs> Joe, you up. That's what had to happen. And some, some Jewish uh, rabbis, friends of mine, have said it's not true. Some said it's absolutely true. So I don't know. And so, but the priest was responsible. One person was responsible to go here into the presence of God and make atonement for the people. What's that have to do with us today? Watch. Watch this parallel. Today, you got this? Today, this is the tabernacle, the courtyard. Remember I told you outer courts, inner courts? Holy place, holy of holies. Mankind, that's us today. 
you're the courtyard, this is likened to our bodies. It's sense conscious. The holy place, this part right here, is likened to our soul. It's self conscious. And the holy of holies is where the spirit, your spirit goes right there. And it's God conscious. This is, this is collegiate heavy stuff. And this is something that God showed me. All right, you guys with me? Take a picture if you need to. But now watch this. In the old school, they had to go through these stations like this. Today, because of Jesus Christ, we still have to do this. And here it is right here. Worship, the path to God's presence. This is why I say when you have sex, you're supposed to experience God. You're supposed to experience God. If you're married, you're supposed to experience God. If you're not experiencing God, you're probably doing something wrong. All right? Now, I promise you, every time we're together... It's not always Shekinah glory. I don't know if you know about the Shekinah glory, but that's the tangible, manifested presence of God. It's like when the Israelites were outside of the mountain and Moses would go up, they could see the cloud and the fire, and they just they didn't want to get close to the mountain because that, they knew that was God, they would die. You follow me? There are times when we are together intimately that, I promise you, there's a cloud that just falls into our bedroom, and, and it's not a physical act anymore. It is not a physical act at all anymore. It's an act of worship. And we, we're translated, we, we, we leave the physical, and it becomes an act of worship. Somebody said this, some, I think maybe you said this, there are a lot of worship songs that we sing can, are actually can be made into love songs between you and your spouse. This is how powerful worship is, and sex is worship. The question is, because we said 99% of my sexuality is not God approved, I've been worshiping sin oh I know man I know this is a fight this is our fight and so here we go this right here is the bronze altar the priest the old school and the priest today because men you're called the priest of your home today what, 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 what had to happen at the bronze altar it says right there old school he had to confess sacrifice praise love and give life what does that mean for husbands today What does that mean? Confess. Confess what? Maybe confess your sins before the Lord. What about this sacrifice? How do I sacrifice today? Because back then, they would have animal sacrifices and pieces of animals that they would burn right there on that altar. Don't do that today. What does sacrifice look like today in a marriage? Dishes. What do you mean? Could be. Yeah. You know, one of the biggest things you could do, men, is listen. Because I'm going to tell you right now, women talk and they talk a lot. They won't shut up. They, okay, we're, jo we're joking. But women do talk a lot and men like to get to the point. And men, just get to the point, get to the point. Stop. Don't do that. Men, don't do that. Roll your eyes like, just get to the point, just get to the point. Stop. You're, you're castrating her right now. You don't do that. But wives, the flip side is, wives, when you become a wife, understand that you talk too much. Tone it down a little bit. It's okay. Because he needs to, he needs to raise up his, his level of love towards you, and you need to tone it down some too. Neither one of us are right. We just have to love each other and meet in the middle there. I mean that. And so... Because women will go on and on and on and they'll tell you, you know, so I said, okay, so the guy came to fix the toilet today. Uh, and that's what I told Sandy. He fixed the toilet today. Well, if this role was reversed and I get home and said, oh, the man fixed the toilet. And she said, yeah, he came by. I said, well, tell me about it. Well, you know, he drove up in his car and then I didn't know it was him and he was outside for a long time and I just watched him and I, so I just waited and then he finally knocked on the door and then uh, he came in and I said, come on in. And so, you know, we talked about his wife and he saw the cats and he's talking to the cats and he has cats himself. And you think I'm kidding. This is, this is about how it goes. And, and, but, but they have to do this because it's an event to them and all this stuff makes sense to them. And they're recounting everything. And all I want to know is, did you charge us money? How long did you take? We're good. That's all I want to know. Right? But she's like, oh yeah, and he was married and you know, I, I think I recognized him because I've seen him before. And, wow. Uh, what are you laughing at? <laughs> so, 
<clears throat> so this is sacrifice. You have to sacrifice. You've got to give her praise. You've got to compliment her all the time. Compliment her all the time. Tell her she's beautiful. Tell her she's gorgeous all the time. Well, dude, tell her more. Don't, every morning I wake up, I'm telling you, I tell her, not because I have to, it's because I'm, I'm in love with her. I, I like looking at her. I, like, I love staring at her. I t I've told her so many times, you're like a fine piece of art. I'm supposed to stare at you. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I just stare at her all the time because I can't stare at her, I can't stare at her enough. And she knows it. Just her name. Sandy. Boy, oh boy, do I love that name. That name has me smitten. Sandy. Oh. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not making this up. Sandy. Oh. Sandy. And you should be able to, matter of fact, I could, I, could, I could turn her on. I could turn her on just saying her name. Sandy. 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 <laughs> and you should be able to do the same thing with your wife. Let her know. Let her know that your name, when it comes off my lips, I'm like, it makes me hungry for you. Did you hear that, woman? No, oh, don't say Sandy. Get, use your wife's name. What's wrong with y'all? So anyway, you got that? Okay, so then, it, it, this is praise and love and give and sacrifice. Rub her feet, do the dishes, cook for her, talk with her. Turn the TV off, turn off the Olympics, turn off sports. Put your phone down and just listen to her. Oh, God, that's so hard. You got to do it. You got to do it. Oh, there's so much more. Okay, now that you've done that, you went to the bronze altar. Priest, bronze laver, that's the wash bowl. What's that for? Cleansing, forgiveness, purification. What does that have to do with husbands and wives today? We're right here now. The goal is the presence of God. For men, the goal is sex and the presence of God. This is foreplay. Yeah. So what does this look like? What, cleansing? Cleansing how? Is it like what you did to you apologize? Partially, yep, definitely. What about, I know that all day long I've been, I've been looking at the secretary at the office in bad ways, and I had to, God, forgive me for that. Get that out of my mind right now, Lord. I'm sorry, Father. I don't want that imagery. And then get that out of your head. Because I just want to look at Sandy. Right? Cleansing. Or maybe, you know, there's... there's a, I think I told you guys, I snapped on Sandy here, I don't know, a couple months ago. I can't remember what it was about. And I, it was the camera, right? Boy, you, why'd you remember all that, man? Throw me under the bus like that. <laughs> it was, it had something to do with the camera. What was it? Something, I don't remember what it was. I don't even think that's what it was. But, but it was something awkward, and I, and I snapped. And then I remember telling you guys on like Monday or the following Saturday, I stopped. I said, Listen, on last Saturday, I, I said this and I snapped at Sandy. That's wrong. I am so sorry. And I apologized to her in front of everybody. Right? I had to because it wasn't right. And so that, that's that cleansing thing. And then forgiveness, make sure there's no issue, you know, no ought between you and purification. Get your mind right. Cleansing also means take a shower. Amen. Take a shower, brush your teeth, yo funky guys. Because there are some guys, I promise you, there are some guys who think I'm all sweating everything. And, and you think it looks good. It's homoerotic is what it is. It's not necessarily homosexual, but you're turned on by it. Now, if your wife likes that stuff, that's fine. Most women don't. Most women tell you, you're stinky, go take a shower. So go take a shower. If she likes to sweat and all that and lick the sweat off your chest, cool, go for it. Some women, I don't know. But most of all, take a shower, brush your teeth, take a shower, you nasties. Okay, now, what's the goal? Where are we going? What's the goal? What's this right here? What's the goal? The Holy of Holies. And what's in there? God. God. And what are, as t today, what's my goal? It's sex with my wife. 
Watch. Oh, see, one of the things I didn't tell you is, you guys remember the old transparencies, the projectors back in the old school days? You had, you remember the projectors? And you would put it on the little glass magnifying thing it would project an image? Well, and then you took a second slide and put it right on top of the first slide and it made a completer image? It's like that. What this is, these parallel each other right here, the tabernacle, the courtyard, the old school courtyard, and that. It's like taking two transparencies and put them on top of each other. All right, and so what happens today, now we're at the table of showbread, and now we're inside here, the holy place. We're getting closer, and so the holy place, what's, what's showbread? Why showbread? It's bread. Why bread? It's just food. Having a meal together, eat together, cook for each other. Yeah, because there's something intimate. How many times did Jesus do that? Eat fish with his disciples. It's a very intimate, cool moment. You're always bringing food up, man. It's always a good moment. So there's that. And then there's the Supper of the Lamb that we're coming into. It's a, it's a time for intimacy and discussion and talk. Then there's a lampstand. There's a lampstand in here. Uh, where is it? Right there. The lampstand. The lampstand represents fire, caliente. It represents illumination and knowledge. It's like putting a light on something that you couldn't see. And the Bible says, you, husbands, dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Learn your wife. Study your wife. Yeah? And then the altar of incense, that represents prayers. You pray with your wife. That altar of incense, you pray with your wife. It's okay to pray with her. Then, you go behind this veil. What does the veil represent on the body? Say it. It's the hymen. It's a woman's hymen. And who's the only one authorized to go beyond her, beyond her veil? Her husband. One person. One person. I'll say this, because you know, sometimes women have had multiple partners. Some guys, guys have had multiple partners. There's a place of forgiveness and restoration. There is. Don't, don't think for a second that there's no hope for you. You can get restored. I'll go over that in just a second. You can get restored. And then however long it takes you to get married, give God that season. Give him that time. From this point on to the time you get married, give that to God. That's your purity again. Got it? And then once you go beyond this veil, you, you, you're having sex with your wife, you come into the Holy of Holies, and you experience the presence of God. That's what all that's about. Okay? All right. Well, should I just continue? Okay, last class. Let me do this. Hang on. I got. Let's wrap this up. We're going. We're going sliding in home now.